My name is Greg Evans. I work for USDA APHIS, the Animal Plant Health Inspection Service in Beltsville, Maryland. I'm responsible for the identification of scale insects and white flies primarily. Today we're going to be talking about white flies and white fly identification. So what is it? This is a white fly that came into Florida not long ago on ficus. The identification process starts with gathering clues and information about the white fly. Where was it found? And what host was it found? That information will give you uh, a chance to go to the white fly catalogs and host plant ca catalogs to find out what, what other white flies have been found on that host or from that country. Knowing the country or the point of origin also tells you which keys and other taxonomic information you need to access to try to identify them. The identification process is often the process of filtering out what it isn't and narrowing down what it is. Of the 1,624 species of white flies, only about 20 or 30 are fairly common, and there's fewer of those that are very common. Having the host and distribution information is very important. It may help you narrow down what it may be even before you get it on a slide. Understanding the characters and keys will help you place it to subfamily, genus, and species. For example, this one was found on citrus in Florida. It lacks compound. It has compound pores. It lacks a submarginal furrow. It has a caudal furrow. And uh, with that combination of characters, you may deduce that it's a Dialerode species. Some important characters that are used to distinguish white fly genera. All these are based on the paparium or the fourth stage instar nymph. Uh, compound pores, these are present in the subfamily Alloridicini. Most of them are along the abdominal margin here, but there is one pair on the, cep on the cephalus. Their presence or absence or their size or shape and arrangement is important when you get down to the generic and species level. The tracheal margin opening is also very important along here, whether there's a pore here or a cleft, sort of a bracket-like uh, structure, or if there's only a differentiated teeth that's different from the lateral margin teeth, or if it's completely undifferentiated. The vasiform orifice down here defines what is a white fly. They're the only group of uh, insects that have this vasiform orifice here in both the preparum and in the adults. The characters of the vasiform orifice are very important in uh, generic and species identification. The furrows and sutures along the body are, are very important also. We'll be talking about those in, uh, more in a little while. The, the um, characteristics of the lateral margin, the degree of the teeth along here, and uh, the crenulae and how this lateral margin is structured is important. The cetacean is also important. Here's some ventral CD along the thorax. The presence of these CD along here and also along the submargin are important characters. This is the A1 CD, or first abdominal segment. Um, these CD are important and also the A8 or eighth abdominal segment. Here's the caudal furrow. Some more on orth, uh, morphology. Here are the compound pores and the lordicine along here. Here's a close-up of the vasiform orifice, which is this orifice or hole-like structure. Inside the orifice is the perculum. It's a, it's a, a plate-like structure. And underneath the perculum is the lingula. Sometimes it's exposed, such as this. Sometimes it's included within the orifice itself and doesn't extend past the posterior margin. The number of CD at the apex of the lingua is important also. Whether there's two pairs here, that helps you to find the, the subfamily Alloridicini versus two pairs in Alloridini. This is a transverse molting suture along here which separates the cephalothorax from the abdomen. The distance, this as far as this reaches to the margin is important. Some, some genera species this only goes as far as the submedial area. Others, it goes all the way out to the lateral margin. This is the submarginal furrow that runs along the submarginal area here. 
and that's an important character in distinguishing genera. Subdorsal folds, in this area, this is the subdorsum, and the submedial area here, and the medial area. So let's go through a, a short key to the common uh, white flies that you may encounter. Pupae of most of these species have compound pores, and their legs will have a, a claw at the end. Their lingua is often very long and extending past the vasiform orifice, and there's two pairs of CD at the end of the lingula. This indicates the family's uh, Alloridaceni. The other family, Alloridaceni, you don't have compound pores. The thoracic legs are end in an adhesive pad, so they're not like a claw. And the lingula only has one pair of CD, but it is often obscured by the perculum that covers it. The next part of the couplet deals with the having elongate spines or siphons on the dorsum versus, is, versus not having them. In the citrus black fly, Alluracanthus waglumi, these are very, the body is black, such as this is a photo of it in nature. It's very shiny, and it has these very uh, long, acute tip spines on, on the body. Versus the other one, Siphoninus filaria, which is the ash white fly, which has siphons, and the body is, is pale. And this is the, uh, a picture of the body in, in real life. They have little uh, ex exudates coming out of these siphons. Next part of the key deals with the presence or absence of the tracheal notch or pore. Here's a, tra a tracheal furrow, and whether it ends in a pore like this or a cleft, which is a sort of bracket-like structure, or if it's completely undifferentiated, it looks just like the rest of the lateral margin. Here's the caudal furrow. You can see that it uh, distinguishes the, the different uh, hemispheres of the uh, white fly versus not having any of the tracheal notch or tracheal furrow. The ones that have the tracheal pore or furrow, in this example, are achemoplatus. You can see the, uh, the tracheal furrow ends in this cleft and has very elongate papillae coming out of, of the, uh, the pore area. Versus dialorotes, the citrus white fly, which is, just ends in a pore and has a very short teeth uh, in this area. Dialorotes also has this faint halo above the mouth parts on the dorsum. And again, the vasiform orifice is very small, and the operculum uh, fills most of the orifice. Alurothrixus flaccosus is the woolly white fly. You can see in, in, in nature, it has massive, uh, copious amounts of, of uh, wax on the leaves, and it has a submarginal furrow. Other genera will have this submarginal furrow, but they won't unite underneath the vasiform orifice like that. They'll only be along the sides. These are genera that don't have uh, tracheal pores, and they don't have submarginal furrows. Um, the trialorotes, they have a submarginal row of papillae along here. These are conical structures, sometimes bullet-shaped, and also the shape of the lingula down here in the vasiform orifice is trilobed. Whereas Bamesia has is very similar, except that it lacks these papillae along the side. And the lingula is spear shaped, right, such as this. These are some important references for white flies. Uh, white flies of Australia, white flies of Europe and the Mediterranean basin. Uh, for the neotropical area, there's uh, White flies of Belize and white flies of uh, Belize Alloridaceni and Alloridaceni. Um, those will cover the Alloridaceni genera very well. And also, there's a revision of the African white flies by Big Moen, works by Koa, Corbett, Takahashi, Russell, Mound, and others. There's a My White Fly website that has a catalog of the white flies of the world and their host plants, and John Dooley's White Fly Pupae of the World Lucid Key. 
these are the collaborators that were responsible for this project. And are there any questions? Can you identify white fly species in the field? There are some white flies that are so distinct that you can identify them with fa fairly good certainty in, in the field, such as the citrus black fly, Alluracanthus waglumi. Uh, because it's black and it's on citrus and has these long spines, and because it's the only species in Alluracanthus that's in the United States that we know of. But, but if you were to go to Asia, or one of those species would come into this area, uh, we couldn't identify it in the field from one of the other Alluracanthus species. What are some of the signs that a white fly may be a new invasive species? Uh, some of the signs might be you may be finding them on a, a plant that had never had white flies before on it before, and or you may suddenly have a, a great infestation of white flies on a plant that you didn't have before. This is because uh, a lot of times they come here uh, without their natural enemies and their po population explodes uh, in their absence. Who's working on white fly taxonomy these days? Uh, there are actually very few people working on white fly taxonomy uh, these days. Ray Gill in California uh, retired uh, but is still active and John Martin at the British Museum uh, retired last year. But in the United States there's uh, Ian Stocks uh, works in, for Florida and, uh, and John Dooley in California and myself in, in Maryland along with Dr. Ko in Taiwan and, and some of the Indian researchers, Dr. Dubey. David, uh, Sundaraj, and a few others.